This is your Adventist News, a service of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I'm Adriel Hepper. Coming up in the news, elders honored for service to God, local leader recognized for 60 years of stellar service to the church, and new officers appointed to the ASI chapter in the Bahamas. These stories and more on this week's Adventist News. watching Adventist News. I'm Adriel Hepburn. Thanks for joining us. Each week we are delighted to bring you the events happening throughout our territory. If you would like our viewers to know what is happening at your church, email us at sbcadventistnews at gmail.com. Last Sabbath, the Seventh-day Adventist Church around the world showed appreciation to the elders for the vital ministry they provide to church members. As part of the activities to honor these men and women, the South Bahamas Conference invited all elders to a fellowship breakfast in the PDA room at Bahamas Academy on Marshall Road. The speaker for the event was Pastor Dan Hugh Gordon. He spoke on the topic, We Need Spiritual Leaders. Pastor Gordon said that a true Christian leader is a spiritual person. He encouraged elders to pattern their lives after Christ and spoke about the importance of spending quality time in prayer on their knees. Among the highlights of the day, was the time spent to acknowledge the stellar service of retired elders who were unable to attend the event. That afternoon, elders throughout the Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventists hosted a special program online to honor the work of elders. This gathering was also the launch of the online training program for local elders titled Committed to God. A total of 24 elders, one from each union, received special honor for their longevity of service and commitment. Pastor Leonard Johnson, president of the Atlantic Caribbean Union said that there were hundreds of elders serving the 90 congregations across the Union and he was pleased to present Elder Stanley Major to be honored from the English-speaking territories in Inter-America for 60 years of service to the church. Elder Major will be joined by Wilbert Bastian from the French-speaking unions for 45 years of service and Elder Armando Hernandez who represented the Spanish-speaking unions for 62 years of service. We say special congratulations to Elder Major his wife Ruby, and family for his dedicated service. These three honorees will be special guests at the IAD Mid-Year Meetings in May of 2017 in Miami, Florida. Elder Laura Anderson celebrated her 99th birthday in February 2017. Sister Anderson is the oldest elder in the Bahamas and has served in almost every office of the local church. Elder Anderson, a native of Bluff Eleuthera, is a teacher by profession and has taught at the government school in that area for over 60 years. The Ministry of Education will honor this patriotic Bahamian, model citizen, and faithful member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church this month by renaming the government primary school in Bluff Eleuthera, the Laura Anderson Primary School. Congratulations, Laura. Happy birthday and congratulations to the elder on this great accomplishment. ASI, the Adventist Layman Services and Industries Chapter in the South Bahamas, is on the move. Recently, a new slate of offices were elected to carry out the mandate of this organization which is to provide opportunities for Adventist business owners to network, provide support to each other, and to model Christ. Serving as president for ASI and the South Bahamas Conference is Ian Green, Sr. The organization has four vice presidents, David Williams, Tony Adderley, vice president for communications, Ray Jennings, vice president for logistics, Louis Flair, Sr., vice president for recruitment. The treasurers are Milton Lewis, Victoria Forbes, and Donnie Rowe with Secretary Shandira Smith, along with trustees Tanya Hanna, Audley Mitchell, and Louis Samalui. The Impact Bahamas Evangelistic Series are ongoing, and if you have not attended any of these meetings as yet, you are definitely missing a blessing. The Encounter Jesus Health and Family Gospel Campaign continues under the Big Tent on Marathon Road with Evangelist Leonardo Ramming, goes into its final weeks with meetings being held every evening at 7 p.m., except Mondays and Thursdays. The Power of Truth evangelistic team presents There is Hope Gospel Crusade with T. Basil Stirrup will begin its second big week nightly at the Grandstown SDA Church on Wellington Street. Services start at 7 p.m. The Extreme Transformation Experience with Evangelist Larry Green is being held under the tent on East Street, also nightly at 7 p.m. And the Unfolding the Seven Seals evangelistic campaign with Evangelist Edward St. Fleur under the tent on Gladstone Road will begin on March 11th to April 9th. When we come back, we'll have more on the upcoming events in our conference. Stay tuned. 
stay with us. Jesus told a story about a man in the street that needed help. Two church leaders passed by doing nothing. They were too busy or too holy to get involved. Then an ordinary guy saw the man in the street and stopped to help. Jesus asked, which of these three was a neighbor to this man? They answered, the one who stopped and helped. The story that Jesus told is as important today as it was 2,000 years ago. Together as Adventist young people, we are called by God to make a difference in our world. The people we pass in the street are just as in need of God's love as the man in Jesus' story. We are called to see, feel, and to take action. God forbid that we pass by or that we leave people in our world feeling needy and neglected. As Adventist young people, our eight million stories are part of something bigger. Global Youth Day brings us together as champions for the cause of Christ. Jesus commanded, go and do likewise. But we have to choose if we will answer the call. On Global Youth Day, millions of Adventist young people came together to change our world by loving others and helping those in need. They were bold and courageous in spreading the gospel. They said yes to Jesus' command. On March 18, 2017, eight million stories will come together again as one voice answering the call to be the sermon. Welcome back. This is your Adventist News, and I'm Adriel Hemper. Thanks for staying with us. Coming up in the South Bahamas Conference, this weekend, on March 3rd and 4th, the Stewardship Director, Elder Anthony Burroughs, will lead a delegation to South Andros to conduct a joint workshop at the New Macedonia Seventh-day Adventist Church. Please pray for our brothers and sisters on the island of Andros. The second annual doctrinal seminar for children and adolescents will be held at the Bahamas Academy PTA Room on number 73 Marshall Road on Sunday, March 12th from 1 to 2 p.m. The facilitator for this seminar will be Brother Lorenzo Rowe. And the men of our conference will be traveling to Camp Kalakwa on March 10 through 12, 2017 for their annual retreat. If you are interested in joining them, please contact Pastor Nikita Thompson at the South Bahamas Conference Headquarters. Global Youth Day is scheduled to be held on Saturday, March 18, 2017. This year's focus will be on giving back to our blood banks. Please listen out for locations on how you can support this youth initiative and how you can spread God's love with those in need. Diabetes prevention is as basic as eating healthier, becoming more active physically, and losing a few extra pounds. And it's never too late to start. Making a few simple changes in your lifestyle now may help you avoid the serious health complications of diabetes down the road, such as nerve, kidney, and heart disease. Consider the latest diabetes prevention tips from the American Diabetes Association. Tip one. Get more physical activity. There are many benefits to regular physical activity. Research shows that both aerobic exercise and resistance training can help control diabetes, but the greatest benefit comes from a fitness program that includes both. Tip two, get plenty of fiber. Fiber can improve your blood sugar control, lower your risk of heart disease, and promote weight loss by helping you feel full. Foods high in fiber include fruits, vegetables, beans, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. Tip three, go for whole grains. These grains may reduce your risk of diabetes and help maintain blood sugar levels. They include various breads, pasta products, and cereals. Tip four, lose extra weight. Every pound you lose can improve your health. Tip five, skip fad diets and make healthier choices. Low carb diets, the glycemic index diet, and other fad diets may help you lose weight at first, but their effectiveness at preventing diabetes isn't known. Instead, think variety and portion control as part of an overall healthy eating plan. 
If you're older than age 45 and your weight is normal, ask your doctor if diabetes testing is appropriate for you. However, blood glucose screening is recommended if you are age 45 or older and overweight. Also, if you're younger than 45 and overweight, with one or more additional risk factors for type 2 diabetes, or you have a family history of diabetes. And always, share your concerns about diabetes prevention with your doctor. I'm April McPhee, and this has been your health tip, courtesy of Adventist Television. And remember, God wants you to prosper and be in good health. And now we go to the Adventist News Network for our news feature from around the world. It's official. There are now more than 20 million Seventh-day Adventists around the world. The chief archivist and statistician of the Adventist Church, David Trim, has more about the significant milestone. David, thank you so much for joining us today. All right, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So we understand that the 2016 membership report has just closed. Uh, where do we stand now as far as our current membership? The great news, Elroy, is that our membership as of December 31, 2016 was 20,008,779. So wow. we have for the first time passed that 20 million milestone. Wow, wow, wow. So what factors have led to uh, this increase in membership? Uh, it's partly due to another record year of accessions. Uh, accessions, of course, is the combination of baptisms and professions of faith. Most people are baptized, but there's always some of the others. Now, the previous record year for accessions was actually 2015, and indeed the last three years have now each been record years. Wow. Um, the previous record before that was 2011, just in case anyone's interested. And actually last year, a total of 1,314,950 people joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So that, again, that's, that's a record. But it's also the first year that baptisms has exceeded 1.2 million. So there's a couple of records there. Oh my. So looking at the major total member involvement campaign in Rwanda and other evangelistic efforts around the world, how did this play a part in this uh, rapid growth? Total member involvement, or TMI, uh, was crucial in setting up the record number of accessions. So this year there were 1,271,305 baptisms. Now that's 88,000 and a bit more than last year. So if you think that last year there were 100,000 baptisms approximately in Rwanda, that explains the difference. It's may, if, if, we, if we hadn't run that campaign in Rwanda and had those major evangelistic initiatives, sure. we wouldn't have that same figure for baptisms. Of course, it's going to be interesting to see what the total harvest will be from uh, TMI this year in the inter-European division and other big evangelistic pushes that are going on around the world. Sure, and we hope uh, the TMI and the other evangelistic efforts can help with this rapid growth. Amen. David, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Well, that's all for this week's Adventist News in the South Bahamas Conference of Seven Day Adventists. On behalf of the production team of Adventist Television Channel 658, we say thank you for watching and join us next time. I'm Adriel Hepburn. Have a happy Sabbath.